Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemdits, and it's time to leave no dye behind. I was filming a video speckling with some dry dye powder, and I have here just some plain water where I was rinsing off my gloves. And I saved it, because we may as well use it for a dye project. In addition, we have some leftover dye in these various containers in shades of blue, pink, and purple. They were mixed with citric acid, and I haven't decided how we're gonna combine everything yet, but I'm gonna fill these up with water. I'm still wearing my respirator mask and safety glasses, and, uh, well, I, I need to put my gloves back on. But I'm gonna fill it up with water, so that way we don't have any dry powder around anymore, and then let's think about how we're gonna dye this yarn. The dyes started out as a combination of Dharma acid dyes in uh, plum dandy, deep purple, sapphire blue, sea spray, and uh, intense iris. And so we're likely going to get something very, very purple. We've got mostly purple shades left. I still have not quite decided how we're going to do this, but I'm waiting for a dye bath on the stove to finish up, so I figured we'll use that leftover bath. Uh, as we get ready to dye our yarn. Right, I am going to go ahead and add a tablespoon of white vinegar to this purple I've collected. Now, granted, there is probably some citric acid in everything and my tap water runs slightly acidic, so we've probably got acid around anyway. But now I have this skein of Dry Knit Picks Stroll fingering weight yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and is typically fairly absorbent, but it is not behaving that absorbent right now. There we go. I'm like, huh, normally this soaks up dye like, like wild, um, but it's just taking a moment. And so I thought that we would start with a nice base color, but actually, as we're soaking up liquid here, you might notice <laughs> almost all the dye is on our yarn here, which is always just nice and fun. So let's go ahead and move over to the stove where I have a warm dye bath waiting. This is my four inch deep catering steam pan that is never used for the preparation of food. It's only used for dyeing yarn. The bath is warm, and I'm gonna add the 100 grams of stroll to it. There's a hint of color left here in the bucket, and I'm just going to pour that on in. And we will carefully spread out this yarn. Oh, actually, the dye bath is not that hot. So there's a lot of water and we've got a lot of acid in here and I'm just helping it open up and I think I'm going to turn the heat back on just to like medium low and now we're going to take these leftover colors and let's start with I believe this is our plum dandy. And I, they, these are gonna spread. They will also somewhat uh, stay put, but I am just going to layer this liquid here. And as much as things spread, things also somewhat strike where I put it. So that's just pretty fun. And I'm gonna do this with the other colors. I think this is our deep purple layering some with the pink and you know we're just seeing how they all come together. I am paying a little bit of attention to areas that have a little bit less color as I'm doing this. Now to some extent colors may spread a lot. I mean I don't know you can see little bits of dye reaching out. It's not all immediately going into the yarn but we're going to have this softness. So this color is, ooh, the intense, I think this is the intense iris at least. 
Uh, I am not sure. <laughs> It is easy to lose track. There's a lot of this one. Uh, and I'm starting this time with the colors I have the most of versus the colors I have the least of, which is not always the way I go about these things. But the reason why I'm doing it this way today is that that can help me decide where I may want to place the colors that I don't have so much of yet. Now, while I'm dyeing this, I'm not moving the yarn around, and the dye is hitting water before the yarn. Granted, there's some movement in the way it's poured, but I found that this is fairly effective for getting, if there's enough acid, for getting like light coverage and penetration of color. Uh, and it's just really, really fun. All right, this is our peacock blue, which I think it's so dilute. It's probably barely making an impact. Uh, and sea spray is a little more concentrated. So yeah, this one might make more of a difference. And so I can just sort of see how it's interacting with the yarn and then decide where to put it. And this is giving us an extremely extremely soft, layered colorway that's really simple and fun. This is actually a technique that recently I tried to somewhat replicate in a planned way. Today I'm dealing with leftovers, so everything I have I want to use up and I'm sort of just seeing how it interacts with the yarn and that's helping me decide the placement. I find this a lot harder to do when I say, okay, I'm going to start with these colors and I want to get this kind of easy, soft, variegated colorway. So I don't know the best way to go about it when I want to do something like this on purpose, but I absolutely love um, where this is going and I'm going to let this continue to heat up as we add more liquid that brings the uh, temperature down. So we're going to bring this up to just below a simmer and then with the heat on low stay there for 20 minutes. The dye bath is now cool but I did let it simmer for 20 to 30 minutes before turning off the heat. The colors have spread a fair amount but I do see some little speckles in here, uh, potentially from some powder that wasn't completely dissolved and when I poured it on. I think, all right, now I guess I'll finally move it. Oof, this is so pretty and soft. So, so soft because of just pouring the large volume on. I really like it. So, uh, now let's go wash the yarn. I think I didn't expect the colors to spread out as much as they did in the end, but nevertheless, it is a gorgeous, soft, uh, tonal yarn, and I'm really into it. It's really, really fun. As much fun as I have dyeing three to four skeins of yarn at a time, it's also really fun to just do one skein, and I love this medium-toned purple. It's a gorgeous shade of purple. Whew, yarn. But anyway, I don't see any bleeding. So I'm gonna rinse out all of this soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and then hang it up to dry. This final leave no dye behind skein of yarn ends up being a lot softer than what I thought I would necessarily get from pouring the dye in the pan. It's sometimes hard to know or predict how fast or slow things might strike, but We've got some beautiful effects of the color on this yarn. From far back, we have what looks like very even coverage. And I'm not sure how well you can see, there are some itty bitty little speckles in there. And there's a softness, an almost glaze will you to it. That's something I'm really finding, that having the yarn in the pan already and then pouring the dye on top letting it spread and not moving things very much might give that softness layer that I have been dreaming of and thinking of. So I need to think about ways to do this with like intent. And this is something that I did once 
a little recently. I had a lot in there, but so maybe it really is just a huge water to yarn ratio. High acid so the dye strikes really quickly and not moving it so that way it's diffusion based. I I don't know. You know, thinking more about the water to volume or the yarn to water volume ratio, we had a lot of water here in the pan and in an episode of Dye Pot Weekly where I recently tried to recreate the softness effect, which worked really well, the colors struck faster to where I put them, but the pan was also more crowded. And so when the yarn is really floating and loose and I'm sitting here with my arms like waving them around that you can't see. <laughs> uh, but when the yarn has that space, and then the dye has that space to move as well, which gives us something so super soft. And this would be, oh, it would be amazing with complex stitch patterns. Uh, there's enough sort of evenness to the colorway that it wouldn't distract from cables or lace. There's definitely something about when I'm just throwing dye onto the yarn and I get these effects and when I'm trying to do it with intent I absolutely overthink it. So I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on going in and sort of I gotta shake it out and like let myself be free and not overthink some of these techniques. Especially when I'm aiming to recreate something that is as free as one of these leave no dye behind skeins. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and turn your notifications on so you never miss a new video. I always share new yarn dyeing adventures at least twice a week, usually on Tuesday and Friday mornings, but then we have unboxings and sometimes live dyeing, live streams, and more. If there are color combinations and techniques you'd like to see me play with, please let me know down in the comments below. I do have a list where I keep track of requests and suggestions and I pull from that all the time as I am designing videos or even thinking about something more freeform like one of these leftover dyeing videos. Most of the yarn that I dye ends up in my Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations. Uh, you can find the link to the shop down in the video description. And just about all of the yarn has been featured in a dyeing video. So as you're using it, you can watch me dye it all over again. I also have a Patreon, uh, but the biggest way that you can support these videos is by interacting with them. So giving them a thumbs up, leaving a comment, and really just watching and enjoying the content, which I really hope you do. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me on my color journey, and I'm really excited to show you what is coming up next. Thank you so much for watching.